Network made by Lucy. It's so lovely to have you all here and thank you to all my new subscribers that have joined me over the last month. It's been fabulous to see you clicking on that subscribe button and interacting and commenting on my videos as well. I hope you have enjoyed them. So today I'm not doing my sewing conversations over coffee this morning. Today I'm sharing with you my end of month sewing vlog. So my end of month sewing vlog is telling you what I've been making for myself over the last couple of months, giving you some reviews of patterns, um, and sharing with you what I'm going to be making next month or this month in fact in November and probably going over to December as well. I love this time of year at the moment for sewing because there's so many gorgeous fabrics out this year, um, sort of woolens and lovely knit fabrics and they're really cosy. Some colours that I love as well, I'm loving all the block colours, really gorgeous. So it really suits my style and my wardrobe so I'm really excited to get sewing um, over the winter all, before I start sharing with you what I've made and giving you some little feedback on the patterns and some reviews I just want to reshare with you I, I shared this in one of my sewing conversations over coffee a few weeks ago my new storage box for my patterns um, I bought this from Amazon you can actually get hold of it on my Amazon storefront I'll put the link below but I love it check out what I'm managing to store in here not only am I storing in here all my um, patterns that I've cut ones that I've made I'm also like patterns I want to do and their fabric the only fabric I can't fit in here are my big chunky woolen ones but obviously that takes up a lot of room so it's really cool for you know storing what I'm making at the moment what I propose to make in the coming months and I love it. I'm loving it. I haven't quite found the right washi tape. It's a very important stage to cover up the little um, name tags that are already on there and put my new ones. But yes, I'm absolutely loving this. Um, it's a fab little storage box to keep everything neat and tidy um, and in one place. So yes, I just want to reshare that with you um, because I love it. Anyhow, let's show you what I've been making. Right, where do we start? Oh, there's been a few bits that I've been having a go with over the last couple of months. Um, the first thing I want to show you is the York Pinafore. So this lovely pinafore here from um, Helen's Closet, Closet Case Patterns, the York Pinafore, I made back in September, beginning of September, I think it was. Um, and I just haven't shared it with you guys yet. I've been sort of waiting. I didn't do an awful lot of sewing through September. October's been much more successful. So I didn't do a little end of month vlog. I just felt I didn't have enough to share with you. So I'm sorry. But I've been I've been on the machine much more this month. So the York Pinafar, I scored this pattern. These are, just in case you're wondering, these are my new pattern record cards as well. If you want to get your hands on these, just pop me um, a message and I'll send some through to you. Um, I gave this pattern a 10 out of 10. Originally, I gave it a 9 out of 10, scored it. And I don't know why, really, because there was nothing I changed on it. It was really easy to follow along. And I'll show you, there's so many amazing tips, tricks, helpful um, suggestions in the pattern itself. Just really, really good. So let me give you a little um, model of the pinafore itself. That's what I'm wearing today. Um, it's got gorgeous big pockets in there. It's got a couple of different versions you can make. I made the high neck um, version, but you can also make one with a lower neck, which I'm gonna do next time. And you can choose what pockets you want to do. So I made this version, but you can also do a kangaroo pocket at the front. Really gorgeous big pockets. Um, I love the really, really low sides. And this means there's no fastenings. You can just pull it over your head. Um, I chose to make it with this sort of dark denim fabric and um, also bought some gorgeous mustard top stitch thread, really strong, to do my pockets um, around my neckline and my armholes. Um, and for the hem, I just done a navy, so it blended in with my um, twin needle. I didn't take anything, um, I didn't make any adjustments really. Actually, that's a lie. The only adjustment I did make is I took it in slightly at the side as I was starting to put it together because it was a bit too gapey for me. Um, I could definitely probably size down. I made a size 10, um, but I think I could definitely get away with making a size 8. And I went for a size 10 on the bust size. But as you can see, you, you don't need to worry because 
the bust size is only this front section here and I'm very small busted so I could definitely get away with a, a size 8. So I did size it down slightly after I'd cut it and started it and began to sort of put it together. Um, so what do I love about it? It's super, super comfy to wear. It's fab for wearing in the sewing studio because there's nothing that gets in your way. You know, you, you've got no sleeves in your way. You can wear it with a t-shirt. You could wear a blouse under there if you wanted to. I've got it with my um, roll neck here, which looks really nice for the winter months and some thick tights. You could dress it up with some gorgeous boots. You know, there's loads of options for it. And I think it would also look really, really gorgeous in a big chunky cord. I think the next one I make, I might make it in a corduroy fabric and with a lower neck. Um, I lined my pocket with a brushed cotton fabric that I had in my stash. Um, it just means that when I pop my hands in my pockets, they're all warm and cosy, which is a nice little extra touch. And for the bias binding, I used the actual denim fabric itself, which was a bit tricky because obviously it's quite thick. So it was quite um, a lot of fabric to stitch around, but I really like that the bias binding inside is the same as the fabric on the outside. So I'd done that for the armholes, but for the neck, because I felt it would be too bulky, I just done a little tiny double hem on the neck. I don't know if you can see, whereas the pattern suggested doing a bias neck. But I just thought using the denim would be too bulky, so I just done a little tiny rolled neck on the on the top and on the bottom I just done a little folded hem so I just used my overlocker to finish the edge and then folded the hem up once um, so that's the only sort of that's the little change I made than what the pattern suggested I used my twin needle around the pocket and I decided to go for the contrasting thread on the pocket and the armholes which I think makes it stand out really nicely but I just used my navy for the neck and the hem like I suggested um, so yeah really like it really really comfortable and you know for sewing in it's really nice because there's nothing around your tummy so if you're sat down obviously we're sat down a lot when we're sewing so it's quite nice it's quite easy to wear there's a lot of movement in it there's no sort of pull um, so it's a great crafting and sewing outfit as well so top marks top marks for um, closet case patterns really really fab pattern and let me just show you inside the pattern so I ordered the PDF download and printed it off from home it's got loads of extra advice in here so it tells you what you can make the different variations it's got a really good size chart um, that you can follow along um, and how to how to print it out and things but the bit I love the most is when you get to um, start cutting out and choosing your pattern it's got loads of extras so for instance it tells you how to grade your pattern so it tells you how to grade out the hips and the arms how to lengthen and shorten the pattern in all in diagrams as well and written instructions really really helpful and really easy to follow along as well it also gives you um, a suggestion to make a muslin, so like a toil of the, the pattern first to check that it fits okay, which is obviously a really good idea for most patterns that you're going to make, just to make sure that um, you know, you're getting the sizing right, and if there's any adjustments you need to make, then when you use it with your real fabric, your fabric you've spent your money on and that you love, you're going to make a really good fitting um, garment. So it gives you suggestions there to do um, a muslin and why that's suggested. And then also at the bottom, it, it tells you how to assess the fit once you've done that as well. So, you know, tells you does the, does the next scoop sit nice and flat? Um, do you need to make a bust adjustment? Do the side scoops make you feel as exposed what you should do if they do? Um, do the side seams feel baggy, what you should do? It gives you loads of suggestions. So really, really helpful guide. Um, yeah, super, super impressed with this pattern. And also all the way along it gives you ideas and hints and tips as well. So here it tells you about bias binding. It also shows you in here how to make your own bias binding should you wish to do that. Um, and then just tips and things as you go through as well. Loads and loads of pictures. So really, really helpful. Perfect for a beginner. So top marks, a really good pattern. I'm definitely going to be searching um, 
closet case pattern see if there's any more that I'd like to make because really really good I can't yeah I can't sort of rave about that enough I was really impressed and didn't make any adjustments to my outfit um, that I thought could have been changed particularly just my neckline but that was mainly because of my fabric to be fair so on my pattern record card I've I've given it a 10 out of 10 I said that I made a size 10 but I'm going to size down to a size 8 next time and I'm definitely going to use a corduroy fabric I think would be really gorgeous um, particularly for this year so with all these lovely oh warm gorgeous fabrics and outfits that are about at the moment so yeah so that was my first project which I absolutely love so big big thumbs up and would suggest for anyone just starting out it'd be ideal for you to make so I'm just gonna pop that back in um, back in there next I moved on to um, trying out a little jacket so I moved on to the Artemis jacket which is this one here from I am patterns I am patterns is a French company um, who makes some gorgeous alternative well not alternative but quite modern and funky patterns really on trend as well but really wearable too so I chose this little jacket pattern it's almost like a coatigan so it's not really structured it's quite big and you could wear it sort of as a casual jacket but you could also smarten it up to make it um, a bit more goey outy as well I ordered the paper pattern for this particular one and it came in a really really gorgeous um, packaging which I really liked Ooh, which I can't find and then this was the little instruction booklet so not as helpful as the York Pinafore it's quite basic instructions you it's, it's got a measurement chart in European sizes and it gives you a few uh, sort of a bit of advice on how to prepare your fabric so sort of pre-washing it and things and then you've basically got six steps one two three four five six and your coat is finished which is fantastic it's really really quick to make really simple make um, really fast but there's a couple of bits I had to reread a couple of times particularly at the preparation of the collar and just to note on here as well at step four it's headed preparation of the collar but this last stage is actually where you're hemming the bottom of your coat and not the comma collar so there was a couple of bits I, I was trying to read and think what hem at the bottom of the collar but then I realized it was the actual bottom of the jacket so there were a couple of bits in there I thought could have been laid out slightly better um, and if you're a beginner particularly there's probably not enough information to really help you get the best from your out you know from your overall garment finished garment so what did I think of this pattern now I measured myself and I came out all over the shop with my measurements and I kind of went in the middle because it is quite a big coat so it's supposed to be quite baggy so I went kind of in the middle of my measurements but what I found from that was it was perfect around but I found that my arms weren't quite big enough so I would have liked baggier arms but kept this width around the body and I'm five foot seven-ish and my body is, well, I wouldn't say it's long, but the coat came out quite short. So sometimes it feels like it's almost pulling. So I could probably do with lengthening the actual body of the coat as well. So let me just give you a little demonstration. I'll just try this on for you. I've got it here. So I use this gorgeous um, checked camel fabric. It's really soft woolen fabric. Um, it's got a little bit of fluff going on there really really warm it's kind of a medium weight fabric um, really really snug so I thought that this would be a fantastic um, fabric to use for the Artemis coat but because of the style of the coat and because it's made the arm section is uh, one whole piece so the whole front and arm is one whole piece of of pattern you don't attach the arms I find that with a non-stretch fabric it kind of pulls a little bit so I would suggest using something with a bit of stretch in there to give you a bit of moving room um, if you sort of attempt to make this pattern and I would definitely be doing that on the next one so maybe a, a thick sort of sweatshirt fabric would be perfect so let's just try this on for you um, I also strengthened strengthened I also lengthened the sleeves on this jacket because 
it doesn't say, but I felt that maybe they were sort of um, shorter arms on here. That's the sort of style of the coat. And I don't necessarily want to have shorter arms on it. So I just lengthened the arms by about two inches, um, which sort of lays just right, really. Just sort of my fingers popping out the bottom. So it's really cute. It's really nice. It'd be a really nice sort of, you know, evening coat, casual evening coat, just to pop over if it's a little bit chilly. The only thing I haven't finished off yet are the buttons on the front. I mean, you don't need to put buttons on the front. It'd be lovely just as an open coat again, like I said. Um, but it does have buttons down this button placket here which I haven't added yet because I just can't decide which ones to go for. I've gone, I bought a couple, but I might get some duffel buttons to go on, which was a suggestion from one of my ladies. So yeah, so I am pleased with it. I, I love um, the warmth of it. I think it feels really lovely. The pull is sort of here over my shoulders. The sort of arm seams almost go around the back of my arm. So it feels a little bit twisted. But I think if you had a jersey fabric, that would really help sort of make that feel like it's not pulling. Um, the neck, the collar is sort of a big sort of, I can't really show you. It's a big stand up collar that you fold over, which is lovely because it's really warm and snug. It's almost like a scarf around your neck. So I really like that touch because I always get cold. So that really helps for me with warmth wise. And then it's got these big hidden pockets um, which are fab and I kind of, I haven't made these pockets before. So when I was doing the pattern, I was like, oh, I don't know how this is gonna work. And then I suddenly saw it. Um, so that's really funky as well. I love pocket pockets. It's got no lining to the coat. So I have overlocked all the seams. Um, the hem here I've overlocked and then I've just turned up and stitched along with a straight stitch. And I've added bias binding around my inner pocket here just to finish off the raw edges. So I've done one to show you and the other is here, which I haven't done yet, just to show you the difference. So this one hasn't got the bias, but it's a bit fray-y and I think the bias binding just finishes it off beautifully. So I've just lined the pocket edges with some black bias binding to, fi to finish it off. And what I also done on this coat, um, it suggested doing a top stitch down the placket front um, on this inside edge here. But this fabric is quite chunky, it's quite dense. So what I've done instead is I just hand stitched this collar um, placket on. You can't see the stitching at all, um, but it just meant that I didn't have to tackle doing a top stitch. And also I found with this particular fabric, because it's a few different colours, it's really hard to choose a top stitching um, thread colour. In the end, I went for a really sort of almost like beigey grey colour, which seems to blend in quite nicely, even against the darker um, sort of patches as well. So I didn't want to sort of spoil the front by being able to see that stitching going down. But I may add that. I haven't 100% decided yet. So still a bit, a couple of adjustments I might make on this coat. I think I would like it a little bit longer. Um, it sort of dips down at the back almost. That's just a style. But overall, it's very cute. I, I do really like it. There's just a couple of things on there I would maybe amend. And I think the main thing that would help it is using a fabric with a slight stretch in it, just to give a bit more sort of movability in the jacket itself. Um, so yeah, I think it looks quite sweet. This fabric I got from the Fabric Guys online, um, which are a new online fabric store. Um, and this was gifted to me. So yeah, so if you wanna go check out their fabrics, they do a really good range actually of dressmaking fabrics, but also the lovely cotton canvas fabrics and cotton fabrics that I love using for all my little homewares as well. So really good um, mixture of fabrics to choose from. So this was the Artemis coat. So I gave it an eight out of 10 because I do really like it. I'm pleased with it. It was really quick to sew up. I just feel the pattern could maybe have a little few more helpful sort of um, suggestions as you're going along, a few more pictures maybe to help people that are just starting out. Um, I just feel that also I need to widen the arms so they're a bit deeper and they maybe might not pull and use a stretch fabric. But other than that, a funky little coat I feel. It's going to keep me nice and warm, um, perfect for those chilly school run mornings as well. So that was the Artemis jacket 
from I Am Patterns. So that was the second thing I made. Let's pop that back in. And then I also, take this off because it is really warm, I also had a go at making my Simply Sewing Magazine pencil skirt. Now I bought some fabric which was a really good deal actually, it was really, I can't remember how much it was but it didn't cost me a lot at all and it was this gorgeous um, woolen fabric here, really really nice knit fabric um, with a smooth sort of backing, so really gorgeous, I loved it when it arrived through, I only bought a metre of it, just sort of, I bought it because I really liked it and then when it came through I thought it would be perfect for the little pencil skirt that I got in the Simply Sewing magazine. So again, a really nice trend for this year. There's loads of pencil skirts about. I had a couple of little features in there I really liked. So at the back, it's got this little kick pleat here, um, which I really like because it's not open. It's sort of, it's like a little box pleat um, at the bottom and it hangs really beautifully. Even on this woolen fabric, it's quite a nice little extra touch. Just gives a bit of definition to the skirt itself. Um, but I, the pattern I found out came out really big and I'm not sure if that's probably a mixture of the pattern itself and the type of fabric I chose is got a really good stretch as well. So I definitely need to size down. Now I done a size 10 in this and actually I think I could size down twice so I could go right down to a size six, which I would never normally wear. Um, but it just felt way too big and when I try it on, it's much too big at the hips. Um, and again, this fabric I didn't feel fell, um, led very good for the waistband, it was too bulky, didn't have enough structure, I probably needed to put a much better interfacing in there, but I just felt it had too much bulk on there, it didn't sit nice. So I think actually to redo this in this fabric would look really smart with a faux leather waist belt on there and then this fabric, and that would just give the waistband, um, just make it lay flatter, much neater. It's got a little invisible zip down the side there, which is absolutely fine. It just didn't lay right. And I think there's probably a mix of the fabric stretched as I was sewing. It was cut too big for, for my sizing. So yeah, so I was disappointed actually that that didn't come out much better because it's a really simple, again, little make. So not gonna be defeated though. So I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna try and fix this one up and try and redo this to make fit. So I'm going to take the waistband off, find some leather, redo the invisible zip on there and take the sides in if I can. So I'll see how that gets on. And then once I've got the sizing good on this one, I've bought some new fabric to retry re on this one, which is this fabric here. So again, a nice cosy woolen one. This one isn't quite so thick, so I'm going to line this one. The actual pattern itself shows you how to do lining, so it suggests a lining on there. But I thought this was really gorgeous as well. So I'm going to have a go again using this fabric once I've got my um, muslin sorted out size-wise. So that's the pencil skirt. So I will update you how I get on with that project. Um, and if you want to see where I've purchased all my fabrics from, if you head back, I'll pop the link up here to one of my conversations over coffee, my um, fabric haul. You'll be able to see on there all the different online shops that I purchased these fabrics from that have come through to me. So that was the pencil skirt. So that's what I've been sewing this month. So I've been quite pleased. I've been doing quite a lot in between my work. Um, I'm loving my pattern record cards for making notes on. They are fab. And my storage box, as you can see, um, for helping me stay a bit more in control of what I'm making. So yes, yeah, so all in all, I've been really pleased. So now let's have a look at what I've got coming up for this month. So I've been really excited. I've had a bit of a fabric shopping spree which is exciting in itself and I've been looking through loads of patterns again you can go back and look at some of my past um, sewing conversations over coffee to see the different patterns and things that I've been purchasing and reviewing and I've come up with some fab ones that I'm going to be making through November and December so I'm going to redo my pencil skirt with the fabric I've just shown you that's one of my first well, one of the makes that I'm going to be doing but the next thing on my list is to have a go at making this gorgeous McCall's this is M7838 pattern um, shirt pattern so I particularly like this because of these rather funky puff sleeves here so 
I'm gonna have a go at this particular pattern way. There's a few different ways you can do it on the back, but I really like this particular one up here. I think it'd be a really nice going out blouse, or you could just tuck it in a pair of jeans. It'd be really lovely sort of casual but dressed up look. Um, so that's what I'm gonna to attempt to do next. And I bought this gorgeous fabric, which I'm gonna to use to make that shirt. So this is a gorgeous viscose fabric, really, really drapey, um, gorgeous to the touch. It's got a, a slight sheen to it, which makes it really, really soft. So the actual puff sleeves are not gonna stand out quite like on here. This is a cotton fabric. They're gonna sort of drape a bit more, but I'm gonna see how that turns out. I'm not overly fussed with them being really puffed out. Um, I might put um, maybe some interfacing or something in there. I'll see how I go. So I'm really excited to be using this gorgeous fabric and it's got kind of a dog tooth background and then these blue um, checkered effect with these gorgeous flowers on. So that is next on my list to make. So I'm very excited to have a go at that. So we're gonna be tackling um, a collar, another button placket, which, I don't love doing but we're going to be tackling that so I'm thinking for this one I'm not sure I always struggle with the finishing touches of things so for instance buttons um, all those sort of extras I really struggle with just the last little bits but I think I'm probably going to go for little black or little grey buttons on here going down the front suggestions what do you think um, it's got buttons obviously all the way down the front so yeah I'd love your help whatever you think I'm thinking probably black because it's mainly got black in I think white would stand out too much but maybe a dark smoky grey might look quite nice but yes yeah, so that is my next make so I'm really excited to start that I haven't drawn the pattern out yet um, and I tend to always trace my patterns out just in case the sizing's not right or I want to make it for someone else afterwards, if they're lucky. So that is my next make. And then after that, I'm going to be sewing up the another Simply Sewing magazine project. So I'm hoping this one's going to size up okay. Um, this lovely midi length skirt that came through in a couple of months ago, I think, in their magazine this again is super on trend at the moment there's loads of these sort of floaty skirts mid-length with boots underneath for the winter which look fab and i bought this fabric which is a navy with these white spots on for the shirt originally and i still think it look amazing in the shirt but i also think it would look amazing in the skirt so i've changed my mind it's a viscose fabric again so it's really really floaty and i'm going to make the skirt out of it i think it would look amazing with a big sort of woolly um orange jumper or something or or this mustard would look equally gorgeous or green there's so many possibilities so that's what i'm going to be making with this fabric so i'm really excited to have a go at that as well and what i particularly love about this midi skirt is it's got a um a fixed waistband at the front a, a flat or smooth waistband at the front but it's got elasticated waist so there's no fastenings you could pull it up but you've still got that nice flat waistband at the front, which I really like. I don't like a elasticated all the way around. So yes, yeah, so that is second on my list to make. So let's pop them back in. So that hopefully I'm gonna have a go at this month. And then in December, I want to make the um, Simplicity pattern, this one here, the S8844 pattern, and this is a blazer which i'm very excited about as well so this one that this model's wearing here is what i'm going to attempt to make and i've bought also some fabric to make that front which i just grabbed this one here so mm, quite similar to what she's wearing again a dog tooth design this is a stretch fabric but i thought that would be really nice on this blazer so sort of a casual blazer look with a bit of movement so that's what I've bought to make my blazer with. So again, but that is not gonna be attempted until these have been made. So this is gonna be my December make. So really excited, I've got loads of things coming up um, and I'm making sure that I've got loads of evenings free and weekends free to get up here and get sewing, make myself some gorgeous makes. So all in all, I feel like I've done pretty well over the last couple of months fitting this in. Um, you know, if you know me a bit further than on the YouTube channel, you'll know that I run a business called Made by Lucy and I also sell handmade gifts. So this is my busiest time of year for that. So I think I've done pretty well to fit it all in. 
So that's what's what I've been making. That is what's coming up in the studio here, what I'm gonna be making for myself. I treated myself also so, to some gorgeous Kylie in the Machine labels as well. There's, she's got loads of funky labels that you could purchase to add to your me made designs. This one just says handmade. I shared these, some of these actually with my academy sewers, my online academy that I run to add to their little makes. And they're in these gorgeous colors, but they've, she's got loads of different ones. So go and check her out. It's um, kylieinthemachine.shop online. And you can find these funky little labels to, to add to your me made garments as well. So I've got some of those, got my patterns, got my fabrics. I've still seen loads of fabric come up. I'm trying to resist buying any more because got to make this first before I get carried away and I've just got piles of fabric and not enough time to make it into things so there's so many gorgeous things out there at the moment for this autumn and winter so really really exciting so let me know guys what you are planning on making what things have you got coming up remember it's always great to sew to your own taste so I'm lucky this year a lot of what's out on the shops is stuff that I really like and in colours I really like so I'm gonna go for it as much as I can and make the most of this season but if it's not for you, what things are you planning on making? Um, have you seen any patterns you'd like to have a go at? But until then, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm super excited to get sewing again and make up some more gorgeous things to share with you all. And thank you so much for watching along. Don't forget to subscribe down the bottom here to see when my next vlog is coming up. Um, and I will see you all again soon. See you then. Bye.